Welcome to the Management 2110's Chapter 10 Lecture, based on the readings from the textbook Management, 14th edition, by Robinson Coulter. So we're going to get started. First, we're going to cover the learning objectives for Chapter 10. We're going to define entrepreneurship and explain why it's important. Then we're going to explain what entrepreneurs do in the planning process for new ventures. Going to know how to creatively think creatively about problem solving a uh, a common problem. And then we're going to develop your skill for writing an executive summary for effectively communicating novel ideas. Then we're going to describe the six legal forms of organizations and the choice of appropriate organizational structure. Then we're going to describe how entrepreneurs lead organizations. Then finally, we're going to explain how managers control organizations for growth, downturns, and exiting the venture. So what is entrepreneurship? Entrepreneurship is the process of starting a new business, generally in response to opportunities. Entrepreneurs are pursuing opportunities by changing, revolutionizing, transforming, or introducing new products or services. Many people think that entrepreneurial ventures and small businesses are one and the same, but they're not. Some key differences distinguish the two. Entrepreneurs create, create entrepreneurial ventures. Organizations that pursue opportunities are characterized by innovative practices and have grown and profitability as their main goals. On the other hand, a small business is one that is independently owned, operated, and financed. It has fewer than 100 employees, doesn't necessarily engage in any new or innovative practices, and has relatively little impact on its industry. A small business isn't necessarily entrepreneurial because it's small. To be entrepreneurial means that the business must be innovative, seeking out new opportunities. Even though entrepreneurial ventures may start small, they pursue growth. Some new small firms may grow, but many remain small businesses by choice or by default. So let's consider three points of comparison. First, uh, entrepreneurs and self-employed individuals understand the market needs. Second, entrepreneurs may be self-employed or they become employees of the company they have started. Third, tax requirements and certain laws require that both entrepreneurs and self-employed individuals create a legally recognized organization. So just remember, self-employment are individuals who work for profit or fees in their own business, profession, trade, or farm. So, entrepreneurship is and continues to be important to every industry sector in the United States and in most advanced countries. Its importance in the United States can be shown in three areas. Innovation, number of new startups, and job creation. An annual assessment of global entrepreneurship called Global Entrepreneurship Monitor, that's GEM, studies the impact of entrepreneurial activity and on economic growth in various countries. The GEM report concludes, however, that entrepreneurship is important for economic development. Entrepreneurs must address four key steps as they start and manage their entrepreneurial ventures. The first is exploring the entrepreneurial context. The context includes the realities of today's economic, political slash legal, social, and the work environment. It's important to look at each of these aspects of the entrepreneurial context because they determine the rules of the game and which decisions and actions are likely to meet with, um, to meet with success. The next step in the entrepreneurial process is starting the venture. 
Included in this phase are researching the feasibility of the venture, planning the venture, organizing the venture, and launching the venture. Finally, once the entrepreneurial venture is up and running, the last step in the entrepreneurial process is managing the venture, which an entrepreneur does by managing processes, managing people, and managing growth. What do entrepreneurs do? Describing what entrepreneurs do isn't an easy or simple task. No two entrepreneurs' work activities are exactly alike. In a general sense, entrepreneurs create something new, something different. They search for change, respond to it, and exploit it. After looking at the potential of the proposed venture and assessing the likelihood of pursuing it successfully, the entrepreneur proceeds to plan the venture. Only after the startup activities have been completed is the entrepreneur ready to actually launch the venture. Once the entrepreneurial venture is up and running, the entrepreneur's attention switches to managing it. As they launch and manage their ventures, entrepreneurs are faced with the often difficult issues of social responsibility and ethics. Just how important are these issues to entrepreneurs? An overwhelming majority of respondents, 95%, in a study of small companies believe that developing a positive reputation and relationship in communities where they do business is important for achieving business goals. However, Despite the importance these individuals place on corporate citizenship, more than half lack formal programs for connecting with their communities. In fact, some 70% of the respondents admitted that they failed to consider community goals in their business plans. Yet, some entrepreneurs take their social responsibility serious. Other entrepreneurs have pursued opportunities with products and services that protect the global environment. Ethical considerations also play a role in decisions and actions of entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs do need to be aware of the ethical consequences of what they do. The example they set, particularly for other employees, can be profoundly significant in influencing behavior. The late Peter Drucker, a well-known management author, identified seven potential sources of opportunity that entrepreneurs may look for in the external context. These include the unexpected, the incongruous, the uh, process need, industry and market structures, demographics, changes in perception, and new knowledge. A uh, competitive advantage is a necessary ingredient for the entrepreneur's ventures, uh, long-term success and survival. Getting and keeping a competitive advantage is tough. However, it is something that entrepreneurs must consider as they begin researching the venture's feasibility. It's important for entrepreneurs to research the venture's feasibility by generating and evaluating business ideas. Entrepreneurial venture, ventures thrive on ideas. Generating ideas is an innovative, creative process. Where do ideas come from? Studies of entrepreneurs have shown that the sources of their ideas are unique and varied. One survey found that working in the same industry was the major source of ideas for an entrepreneurial venture in 60% of the respondents. Uh, other sources included personal interests or hobbies, looking at familiar and unfamiliar products and services, and opportunities in external environmental sectors, be in technological, sociocultural, demographics, economic, or legal slash political. What should entrepreneurs look for as they explore these idea sources? They should look for limitations of what's currently available, new and different approaches, advances and breakthroughs, unfulfilled niches, or trends and changes. Evaluating entrepreneurial ideas revolves around personal and marketplace considerations. 
Each of these assessments will provide an entrepreneur with key information about an idea's potential. Exhibit 10-1 here describes some questions that entrepreneurs may ask as they evaluate potential ideas. So when uh, looking at personal considerations, do you have the capabilities to do what you've selected? And then the considerations to uh, from the marketplace, who are the potential customers for your idea? You know, who, where, how many? You know, another personal consideration. Are you ready to be an entrepreneur? And then we're going to go to, uh, stick with the uh, personal considerations. Are you prepared emotionally to deal with the stresses and challenges of being an entrepreneur? And then are you prepared to deal with rejection and failure? Uh, are you ready to work hard? Do you have a realistic picture of the venture's potential? Have you educated yourself about financing issues? And are you willing to prepare to do continual financial and other types of analysis? Those market considerations, again, who are the potential customers for your idea? Who, where, how many? Uh, also, what similar or unique product features does your proposed idea have compared to what's currently on the market? Next, how and where will potential customers purchase your product? And have you considered pricing issues and whether the price you'll be able to charge will allow your venture to survive and prosper? And then finally, have you considered how you will need to promote and advertise your proposed entre entrepreneurial venture? A more structured evaluation approach that an entrepreneur may want to use is a feasibility study, an analysis of the various aspects of a proposed entrepreneurial venture designed to determine its feasibility. Not only is a well-prepared feasibility study an effective evaluation tool to determine whether an entrepreneurial idea is a potential successful one, it also can serve as a basis for the all-important business plan. So again, the feasibility study is an analysis of the various aspects of a proposed entrepreneurial venture designed to determine its feasibility. A feasibility study should give descriptions of the most important elements of the entrepreneurial venture and the entrepreneur's analysis of the viability of these elements. Exhibit 10-2 provides an outline of a possible approach to a feasibility study. Yes, it covers a lot of territory and takes a significant amount of time, energy, and effort to prepare it. However, an entrepreneur's potential future success is worth that investment. And this is the second slide of our feasibility study. Continuing on to slide three of four on our feasibility study. And then four of four of the feasibility study. Now, part of reaching the venture's feasibility is looking at the competitors. What would entrepreneurs like to know about their potential competitors? In addition to those listed above in the slide, or possible questions uh, include, um, do they appear to be successful at it? Why or why not? What are they good at? What competitive advantages do they appear to have? And what are they not so good at? What competitive disadvantages do they appear to have? And how large and profitable are these competitors? Now, once an entrepreneur has this information, he or she uh, assesses how the proposed entrepreneurial venture is going to fit in this competitive arena. So again, Look at some of those potential questions, not the ones I went over, but the ones on the slide. Uh, what types of products or services are the competitors offering? 
what are their product strengths and weaknesses, and how do they handle marketing, pricing, and distribution, and how do they attempt to do uh, differently from other competitors. Now, because funds likely will be needed to start the venture, an entrepreneur must research the various financing options, okay? And uh, researching the venture's feasibility and finance, you want to know that venture capitalists uh, involves uh, external equity financing provided by professionally managed pools of investor money. Now, angel investors is a private investor group or private investors or group of private events, uh, investors who offers financial backing to an entrepreneurial venture in return for equity in the venture. And then your initial public offering, which is an IPO, um, usually you hear it referenced as in that, the acronym uh, IPO, um, the first public registration and sale of a company stock. So possible financing options available to entrepreneurs are shown here in Exhibit 10-3. One option is the entrepreneur's personal resources, personal savings, home equity, personal loans, and credit cards. Then your uh, venture capitalists, that's your external equity financing provided by professionally managed pools of investor money. Uh, we went over angel investors, that's the private investor or group of private investors who offers financial backing to an entrepreneurial venture in return for equity in the venture. Then you have the IPOs, and that's the first public registration and sale of the company stock. You have national, state, and local governmental uh, business development programs, and then unusual sources, and that's television shows, judged competitions, and crowdfunding. Now, planning is also an important uh, to entrepreneurial and ventures. Once, an entre um, once the venture's feasibility has been thoroughly researched, the entrepreneur must then look at planning the venture. The most important thing that an entrepreneur, entrepreneur does in planning the, event, the, the venture is developing the business plan. And remember, the business plan uh, we've covered before, but that's a written document that summarizes a business opportunity and defines and articulates how the identified opportunity is to be seized and exploited. Now, for many would-be entrepreneurs, developing and writing a business plan seems like a daunting task. However, a good business plan is valuable. It pulls together all the elements of the entrepreneur's vision into a single coherent document. Now, if an entrepreneur has completed a feasibility study, much of the information included in it becomes the basis for the business plan. A good business plan covers six major areas. They are executive summary, analysis of opportunity, analysis of the context, description of the business, financial data and projections, and supporting documentation. So have you ever wanted the companionship of a dog, but because you didn't have the time or money to keep one, you rent one every other weekend? <laughs> have you ever rented someone else's bike? Answering yes to either question probably means that you've participated in the sharing, in the sharing economy. The sharing economy refers to business arrangements that are based on people sharing something they own or are providing a service or for a fit. Now, the first organizing decision uh, that an entrepreneur must make is a critical one. It's the form of legal ownership for the venture. Now, the two primary factors affecting this decision are taxes and legal liability. An entrepreneur wants to minimize the impact of both of these factors. So the right choice can protect the entrepreneur from legal liability as well as save tax dollars in both the short and long run. Um, what alternatives are available? The three basic ways to organize the entrepreneurial venture are sole proprietorship, partnership, and corporation. 
However, when you include the variations of these basic organizational alternatives, you end up with six possible choices, each with its own tax consequences, liability issues, and pros and cons. So, just remember, the sole proprietorship is a form of legal organization in which the owner maintains sole and complete control over the business and is personally liable for business debts. Then you have your general partnership, and that's a form of legal organization in which two or more business owners share the management and risks of the business. Now, the limited liability partnership is a legal organization formed by general partners and limited partners. The general partners actually operate and manage the business. They are the ones who have unlimited liability. At least one general partner is necessary in an LLP, but any number of limited partners are allowed. Now, of the three uh, basic types of ownership, the corporation, also known as a C corporation, is the most complex to form and operate. A corporation is a legal business entity that is separate from its owners and managers. Okay. Now, many entrepreneurial ventures are organized as closely held corporation, which is uh, very simply in an is an organization owned by a limited number of people who do not trade the stock publicly. Now, the S corporation, a specialized type of corporation uh, that has regular characteristics of a C corporation, but is unique in that the owners are taxed as a partnership as long as certain criteria are met. And then you have limited liability company and LLC. It's a very common one, especially for small business. A form of legal organization that's a hybrid between a partnership and a corporation. Then you have your operating agreement, and that's the document that outlines the provisions governing the way the LLC will conduct business. Now, Exhibit 10-4 summarizes the basic information about each organizational alternative. I'm going to leave this up. Then moving on to the next slide. So it's a continuation. We'll leave it up. So the choice of an appropriate organizational structure is also an important decision when organizing an entrepreneurial venture. At some point, successful entrepreneurs find that they can't do everything alone. More people are needed. The entrepreneur must then decide on the most appropriate structural arrangement for effectively and efficiently carrying out the organization's activities. Without some suitable type of organizational structure, the entrepreneurial venture may soon find itself in a chaotic situation. Now, organizational design decisions in entrepreneurial ventures revolve around six key elements of organizational structure being work specialization, departmentalization, chain of command, span of control, amount of centralization and decentralization, and the amount of formalization. Now decisions about these six elements will determine whether an entrepreneur designs a more mechanistic or organic organizational culture. Now, as employees are brought on board, the entrepreneur faces certain human resources uh, management issues. Two uh, human resource management issues of particular importance to entrepreneurs are employee recruitment and employee retention. Now, an entrepreneur wants to ensure that the venture has the people to do the required work. Now, recruiting new employees is one of the biggest challenges that entrepreneurs face. In fact, 
the ability of small firms to successfully recruit appropriate employees is consistently rated as one of the most important factors influencing organizational success. Getting competent and qualified people into the venture is just the first step in effectively managing the human resources. An entrepreneur wants to keep the people he or she has hired and trained. Now, we know that context facing entrepreneurs is one of dynamic change. Both external and internal forces may bring about the need for making changes in the entrepreneurial venture. Entrepreneurs need to be alert to problems and opportunities that may create the need to change. In fact, of the many hats the, an entrepreneur wears, that of change agent may be one of the most important. Now, during any type of organizational change, an entrepreneur may also have to act as a chief coach and cheerleader. Uh, because organizational change of any type can be disruptive and scary, the entrepreneur must explain the change to employees and encourage the change efforts by supporting employees, getting them excited about the change, building them up, and motivating them to put forth their best efforts. So what must an entrepreneur do to encourage innovation in the, in the venture? Having an innovation supportive culture is crucial. Now what does such a culture look like? It's one in which employees perceive that supervisory support and organizational reward systems are consistent with a commitment to innovation. It's also important in this type of culture that employees do not perceive their workload pressures to be excessive or unreasonable. And research has shown that firms with cultures supportive of innovation tend to be smaller and fewer formalized human resource practice, uh, practices and have less abundant resources. Now we introduced the proactive uh, personality trait in chapter 15. It's a personality trait of individuals who are more prone to take actions to influence their environment. That is, they're more proactive. Um, obviously, an entrepreneur is likely to exhibit proactivity as he or she searches for opportunities and acts to take advantage of those opportunities. Now, various items on the proactive personality scale were found to be good indicators of a person's likelihood of becoming an entrepreneur including gender, education, having an entrepreneurial parent, and possessing a proactive personality. So why? Because successful entrepreneurial ventures must be quick and nimble, ready to pursue opportunities and go off in new directions. Empowered employees can provide the flexibility and speed. When employees are empowered, they often display stronger work motivation, better work quality, higher job satisfaction, and lower turnover. If an entrepreneur implements employee empowerment properly, that is, with complete and total commitment to the program and with appropriate employee training, results can be impressive for the entrepreneurial venture and for the empowered employees. The business can enjoy significant productivity gains, quality improvements, more satisfied customers, increased employee motivation, and improved morale. Employees can enjoy the opportunities to do a greater variety of work that is more interesting and challenging. So today's successful entrepreneur must be like the leader of a jazz ensemble uh, known for the impro um, improvisation, innovation, and creativity. Max Dupree, former head of Herman Miller Incorporated, a leading office furniture manufacturer known for its innovative leadership approaches, said it best in his book, Leadership Jazz. Jazz band leaders must choose the music, find the right musicians, and perform in public. But the effect of the performance depends on so many things. The environment, the volunteers playing the band, 
the need for everybody to perform as individuals and as a group and the absolute dependence of the leader on the members of the band the need for the followers to play well the leader of the jazz band has the beautiful opportunity to draw the best out of all other musicians now we have much to learn from jazz band leaders for jazz like leadership combines the unpredictability of the future with the gifts of the individuals now employees work employee work teams tend to be popular in entrepreneurial ventures an industry week census of manufacturers showed that nearly 68 percent of survey respondents use teams to varying degrees now for team efforts to work however entrepreneurs uh, must shift from the traditional command and control style to a coaching collaboration style now although it may seem we've reverted back to discussing planning issues uh, instead of controlling issues actually controlling is closely tied to planning as we will discuss in chapter 18 and the best growth strategy is a well-planned one ideally the decision to grow doesn't come from doesn't come about spontaneously but instead is part of the venture's overall business goals and plan now rapid growth without planning can be disastrous Entrepreneurs need to address growth strategies as part of their business planning, but shouldn't be overly rigid in that planning. The plan should be flexible enough to exploit unexpected opportunities that arise. Now, with plans in place, the successful entrepreneur must then organize for growth. Now, Exhibit 10-5 lists some suggestions that entrepreneurs might use to ensure that their venture's culture is one that embraces and supports a climate in which organizational growth is viewed as desirable and important. And some of these, uh, we're going to go over some of these suggestions, and that's keep the lines of communication open. Inform employees about major issues. Next one is establish trust by being honest open and forthright about the challenges and rewards of being a growing organization. Next is be a good listener. Find out what employees are thinking and tasting. Then be willing to delegate duties. Be flexible. Be willing to change your plans if necessary. And provide consistent and regular feedback by letting employees know the outcomes, good and bad. Next is to reinforce the contributions of each person by recognizing employees' efforts. Then continually train employees to enhance their capabilities and skills. Then maintain the focus on the venture's mission, even as it grows. And finally, establish and reinforce the we spirit that supports the coordinated efforts of all the employees and helps the growing venture be successful. Now, an entrepreneur should be alert to the warning signs, warning signs of a business in trouble, some signals of potential performance decline. Include inadequate or negative cash flow, excessive uh, ex excess number of employees, unnecessary and cumbersome administrative, administrative procedures, fear of conflict and taking risks, tolerance of work incompetence, lack of clear mission or goals and ineffective or poor communication within the organization now the boiled frog is a classical psychological response experiment in one case a live frog that's dropped into a boiling pan of water reacts instantaneously and jumps out of the pan but in the second case a live frog that is dropped into a pan of mild water that is gradually heated to the boiling uh, point fails to react and dies a small firm may be particularly vulnerable to the boiled frog phenomenon because of the entrepreneur may not recognize the water is heating up that is now the subtle decline of the situation uh, when changes in performance are gradual 
a serious response may never be triggered or may be initiated too late to intervene effectively in the situation. Now, getting out of entrepreneurial venture may seem to be a strange thing for entrepreneurs to do. However, the entrepreneur may decide at some point that it's time to move on. Now, that decision may be based on the fact that the entrepreneur hopes to capitalize financially on the investment in the venture called harvesting, or the entrepreneur is facing serious organizational performance problems and wants to get out, or even on the entrepreneurial entrepreneur's desire to focus on other pursuits, you know, personal or business. Now, the issues involved with exiting the venture include choosing a proper business valuation method and knowing what's involved in the process of selling a business. Now, selling a value on a business can be a little tricky. In many cases, the entrepreneur has sac sacrificed much for the business and sees it as his or her baby. Calculating the value of the baby based on objective standards such as cash flow or some multiple of uh, net profits can sometimes be a shock. Now, that's why it's important for an entrepreneur who wishes to exit the venture to get a comprehensive business evaluation, business valuation prepared by professionals. Now, although the hardest part of preparing to exit a venture is valuing it, uh, other factors also should be considered. Now, these factors include uh, being prepared, deciding who will sell the business, considering the tax implica implications, uh, screening potential buyers, and deciding whether to tell employees before or after the sale. Now, the process of exiting the entrepreneurial venture should be approached as carefully as the process of launching. So if the entrepreneur is selling the venture on a positive note, he or she wants to realize the value build up in the business. If the venture is being exited because of the declining performance, the entrepreneur wants to maximize the potential return. So in review of our first learning objective, please remember entrepreneurship is the process of starting a new business um, generally in response to opportunities. Entrepreneurial ventures are different from small businesses. A small business is one that is independently owned, operated, and financed, has fewer than a hundred employees, and doesn't engage in any new or innovative practices, and has relatively little impact on its industry. Entrepreneurship is also not the same as self-employment. Entrepreneurs must explore the entrepreneurial context, identify opportunities, and possibly uh, possible competitive advantages, start the venture, and manage the venture. Entrepreneurs must also manage concerns related to social responsibility and ethics. Now, moving on to our second learning objective in review. A feasibility study is an analysis of the various aspects of a proposed entrepreneurial venture designed to determine its feasibility. This analysis includes looking at the competitors, determining, determining how to get financing, and developing a business plan. Now, the business plan should include an executive summary, an analysis of the opportunity, an analysis of the context, and a description of the business, financial data, and projections, and supporting documentation. Now, the sharing economy that is emerging is creating many new entrepreneurial opportunities through people sharing something they own or providing a service for a faith. In review of our third learning objective, in a sole proprietorship, the owner maintains sole and complete control over the business and is personally liable for business debts. In a general partnership, two or more owners share the management and risk of the business. 
A limited liability partnership is formed by general partners and limited partners. A corporation or C corporation is a legal business entity that is separate from its owners and managers. It is a closely held corporation when it is owned by a limited number of people who do not trade the stock publicly. An S corporation is a corporation that is unique because the owners are taxed as a partnership as long as certain criteria are met. A limited liability company is a hybrid between a partnership and a corporation. As an organization grows, the entrepreneur must decide on an appropriate structure for the organization. The entrepreneur must also face human resource management issues such as employee recruitment and employee retention. Entrepreneurs must be open to initiating change and must also continue to innovate. In review of our fourth learning objective, while there is no specific personality characteristic that all entrepreneurs have, researchers suggest that there are several personality traits that are more common among entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are also persistent problem solvers. They have a high degree of initiative and have the ability to set goals. They are moderate risk takers, possess great persistence, resourcefulness, the desire and ability to be self-directed and have a relatively high need for autonomy. Entrepreneurs must also have a proactive personality trait, which means that they are more prone to take actions to influence their environment. Entrepreneurs motivate employees through empowerment and entrepreneurs must lead the venture and also lead employee work teams. And in review of our fifth and final learning objective, entrepreneurs must uh, manage growth through planning for growth, organizi organizing for growth, and controlling for growth. Entrepreneurs must manage downturns through recognizing crisis situations and then dealing with downturns, declines, and crisis. At some point, an entrepreneur may determine that it is time to exit a venture in order to capitalize financially on the investment, which is called harvesting, or, or because the entrepreneur is facing serious organizational performance problems, or because the entrepreneur wants to pursue other business or personal opportunities. Now, to do so, the entrepreneur must use a method to value the business and consider a variety of other important factors in the process. So thank you for your participation in the Chapter 10 lecture. Stay tuned for the Chapter 11 lecture. Until then, check Blackboard for the week's activities and assignments.